Oh, I think it was a couple nights ago. I wasn't in the happiest of moods. There have been some things, you know, have you ever, you know, things, everything goes wrong. You yeah. Know? You spilled this and you knocked that over right. and this caught on fire. Amen. Amen. That's right. And I probably wasn't showing as happy as I should have. And I went in there and I sat down at my desk. And I was working on a radio station or something and I felt a hand on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I turned and said, what are you doing? Uh -huh. He said, I'm praying for you. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't get much of that. That's it, brother. No. And you talk about knocking the wind out yeah. of these sails. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Hey, you might have thought that you had reason to be mad. Well, <laughs> but that takes it right out of you. That's amen. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. I'm thankful. Thankful for that. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. I wanted to share with you this morning that last Sunday's service that we recorded and aired on the radio station this morning. I noticed because see you have there's a way we of our stat tracker we can check and see yeah. what all countries are tuned in oh, wow. at specific times. Last Sunday's uh, service was listened to several states in the United States, but also the Netherlands and Argentina. Praise the Lord. So that's pretty good. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's not counting the videos that have been watched on Facebook. Hallelujah. So just want you to know that it goes a lot farther than where we're at. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. And that doesn't count our iTunes listeners and the Podomatic listeners and the the uh, lot of different ways we're getting the word out that we appreciate the Lord for and appreciate your help because yeah. you're as much a part of that as anyone else. Amen. Praise every Lord. seed that you sow and every amen that you holler and every hand clap that you lift up is all part of what God is doing here. Last week we talked about what did we talk about last week? Can y'all tell me? My goodness. Nehemiah, we talked about pressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pressing on. Pressing against the pressure. Amen. And we mentioned a few of the devices of the enemy. Yeah. And I want to go back in that direction a little bit today. Not quite exactly in the same way as we did. But I want us to talk this morning about our adversary. And I don't spend a whole lot of time talking about him because I don't want to give him much airplay. But... He does exist. Amen. Contrary to the uh, popular opinion of most of the feel-good church of today, he does exist. Amen. And he does steal. His desire is still to, to, uh, to steal, kill, and to destroy everything that's good. Amen. Hallelujah. So when the Lord began to give me this message last night, and he gave me the title before he gave me anything else, and he spoke to my spirit and he said, there's a thief in the house. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And at first I thought he might have been talking about tithing. Amen. Yeah. Because you can preach that in a lot of churches. I don't see anybody around here this morning that I could preach that at, but a lot of people out there listen, maybe it's to hit you. Oh, Amen. Right. You could preach that there's a thief in more than one thief in God's house this morning because when you don't tithe an offering, mm -hmm. you rob God. That's Amen. Right. It say? never ceases to amaze me. That people will go through the Bible and cherry pick what they want to use. Amen. Right. The same people that when you bring up tithing uh -huh. will say, oh, no, no, no. That's under the old covenant. That's something we don't have to listen to no more. Yeah. That's, that, that's, they'll say it's the law. They'll say it's the Old Testament. Uh -huh. But these same people will go back through the words of the prophets and they'll quote, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed. Amen. They'll use all of that. Yes. Yet they overlook the fact that God says if you don't tithe, you're cursed with a curse. Oh, Amen. Right. Same God. Amen. And tithing, as a matter of fact, is not part of the law anyway. It was established before the law. And even after the Old Testament, into the New Testament, when Jesus talks about give and it shall be given. Yeah. When Paul talks about you reap what you sow. Amen. Right. So it's all through the Word of God. It's a spiritual law right. that you reap what you sow. Whether it's finances or whether it's you know it, other things that we plan along the way, it not, doesn't necessarily just depend on, just, just doesn't apply to finances. It applies to a lot of things. Amen. But tithing that is still in effect today. Amen. Tithing is still as much a part today as it always has been. It was before the law. It was after the law. It wasn't part of the law. Amen. Right. At least not the way that it was done by Melchizedek and whenever it talks about Abraham and on down the line. Come on. Hallelujah. That was before. The law was established. 
But it's not got to do with tithing, although it would preach that way. Amen. Right. I want to go this morning to John, the 10th chapter. And the thief that I want to talk about is the devil. John, the 10th chapter. And I want to talk to you this morning about our adversary. Yeah. Your enemy. Come on. Amen. The one that opposes all good. The one that speaks words against the Most High like we read last week. Come on. And really, whenever you steal from God, you're only accomplishing something the devil wants. Amen. He's just using you. You know, he's looking for people to use for his work. Right. You know, we always talk about God's always looking for somebody to use, and he is. Mm -hmm. So is the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that he accomplishes, he can only accomplish through you. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Come on. He can't rob from God your tithe unless He does it through you. That's right, bro. He can't rob from God your offering unless He does it through you. That's right. A lot of turmoil, strife, and, and destruction can't be done any other way unless He works through people. Amen? Unless He works through people, He cannot get it done. So He's looking for somebody to use today. Amen? To be His hand outstretched. The Bible says in John the 10th chapter... And a lot of you know this, a lot of this by heart. The beginning of the first verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. All right. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. Come on. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. Mm -hmm. He leadeth them out. Do you know Jesus knows your name? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Brother least he knows your real name. Right. Whether it's Butler or Fitzwater, or whatever you said it was a week or two ago. He knows your name. Amen. Yeah. He calls you by name. I believe that's how, when he shouts from glory, it may be your name he calls. Amen. Yeah, right. It may be your name you hear. It may be my name that I hear. In the middle of the night, amen, in the oh. death of silence, I might hear, Billy! Oh, and I know it's His voice. Amen. Because it says they're my sheep and they know the voice of the shepherd. Amen. Come on, hurry. And we're not supposed to, we're supposed to know His voice so well that we will not follow another. That's right. Amen. Listen to this. When He put it forth His own sheep, He goeth before them and the sheep follow Him for they know His voice. Yes. And a stranger they will not follow. But will flee from Him for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which He spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yeah. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Oh, my, my, my. That'll preach, amen. amen. And you can also say that all that came after Him were thieves and robbers, amen, that claimed that they were the great prophet or that they were the Messiah or that they were the Christ or that they were the only way, amen. Right. Muhammad was a thief right. and a robber, amen. Right. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, that they might have life, and that they might have it more oh, abundant. So what is he interested in stealing today? And we realize that the thief is our adversary. Amen. Our enemy. What's he come to steal today? Well, we can start with a few things that he likes to get a hold of. Is your peace. Yes. Amen. Your joy. Your time. I mentioned your tithe. How many people have ever thought, where did the time go? Yeah. Amen? I was going to read my Bible today, but where did the time go? The thief stole it. That's it. Amen? Oh, he might have used your job. He might have used your husband. He might have used your wife. He might have used your children. But somehow or another, he got in the door. The thief got in the house. Amen? And he stole it. It might have been the TV. That's it. You got to watch an Oprah. And God help you if you do. Come on, brother. Amen? Come on. She may not even have a show no more. I hope she don't. Amen. Amen. Any woman with that kind of an audience that can sit there and say, Jesus can't be the only way. She don't deserve my time for, for me to listen to. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Can I say that again? Yeah. I don't want to get sued or nothing. But when the big old says that there's, there's got to be other ways, Jesus cannot be the only way, I ain't watching her. No. That's 
Amen. Amen. I don't care if she's interviewing Obama. I don't. I for sure ain't gonna watch her. She's interviewing Obama. I don't care if she's interviewing my favorite star. I ain't gonna watch her. Amen. She 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 ain't getting my attention. But the television might have stole your time. Amen. Yeah. Maybe it was a crossword puzzle that you spent two hours on trying to figure out and stole your time. But when it all comes down to where the rubber meets the road, the thief stole your time. Right. You didn't have time to pray. You didn't have time. Oh, I ain't the only one that's ever been there, have I? Am I? Am I the only one that's ever at the end of the day you thought, man, I intended to do more studying today. Now listen, during the day that goes by, I don't read the Word. I can't imagine people leaving their Bible on their pew to save their seat. Amen? Right. And not picking it up again till the next Sunday. There ain't a day that goes by that Scripture don't go in this brain. Amen? All right. But never never, as much as it should. Amen? Right. And I'm thinking, I intended to read more today. Amen. I intended to pray more today. But what happened to the time? It right. got stolen. Right out from under your nose, the thief stole your time. Amen. We didn't recognize it. We wasn't watching for him. We wasn't paying any attention. And then the day was gone. Many people, listen, you think, well, that's just a day, but yet many people at the end of their journey wonder the same thing. Where, where's the time gone? I'm talking years had been stolen. Right. Wasted. Amen? They didn't live for God. They did nothing for God. They gave nothing for God. Why? Time is right. I'll do it later. Yeah. He's still in your time. That's it. He's still in your time. Amen? Maybe the internet got you time. I know from experience, you can sit down and you can start posting some stuff or you can start looking at some stuff. And man, it's been two hours I've been sitting here. Yeah. Amen? That's right. And some people, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah, kill a day. Yeah, kill a day. And then another day. And then another day. And then another day. And you find yourself with no more time left. There used to be a song called Wasted Years, Wasted Years. Oh, how foolish. Amen? What happened to them? The enemy stole them. Right out from under your nose. God gave you 70 years on earth and you allowed the enemy to steal most of them. Amen? So He comes to steal your time. He comes to steal your tithe. Amen? Can I get an amen on that this morning? I know there's tithe payers in the house. Amen? He'll steal it. Amen? Amen. You have every intention to, to, to give your tithe and your offering. But you spent more at Walmart than you should have. Amen? All right, Maybe your light bill was a little higher than you thought it'd be, so you paid it first, and surely you'll have enough left over, amen, to give yeah. to the Lord. Come on. But the enemy stole it. He's the pickpocket. Amen? That's right. He'll reach into your billfold, and he'll steal your money. That's right. Actually, he'll steal God's money. Amen? Right. He'll steal God's money. God told them over the book of Malachi, will a, man, will a man rob God? And they said, how can we rob you? How did we rob you? And he said, in your tithe and in your offering. Amen? Yeah. That's how you robbed me. That's the way the devil steals your money. That's right, He'll bro. steal your tithe. He'll steal your time. He'll steal your peace. Right. I've never seen so many Christians didn't have peace. Amen? Supposed to be born again. Supposed to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Yes, they're, they're in so much turmoil all the time. That shouldn't be, saints. That's right. That shouldn't be. Amen? Amen? And you shouldn't have to lay on the leather couch to get peace. You shouldn't have to go to the medicine cabinet and open up your pill bottle and take some whatever the, the antidepressants or whatever it is to get your peace. Amen? Right. The, the, the enemy, the thief, has stole. There's a thief in the house. Right. He stole your peace. He stole your joy. He stole your money. He stole your time. And he's left you with little of nothing. That's it, Amen? Brother. You feel empty? Why? Because he stole it all. Amen. He stole it all. That's the truth. He's a thief. Right. He's a robber. He will steal. He will kill. Yes. He wants to kill your witness. Right. Amen. That's it. He wants to kill the love that you have inside of you. Right. He wants to kill the joy that you feel. Oh, yeah. He wants to destroy everything that makes you happy in the Lord. Amen. Right. He wants to replace those things with futile and, and, and things that are in, that, that are not important and things that, that, that have no value and things that are fleeting and that things that will pass away and things that will not last. Come 
He wants to replace that joy, that, 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 that joy unspeakable and full of glory with, with a little bit of a fix that makes you feel good for a little while, but you, you feel worse after. Amen? He wants to give you peace out of a bottle instead of out of the Bible. He wants to give you peace that doesn't pass all understanding, but that depends upon the circumstance and the situation and the things that are going on in your life. That's what He wants to replace it with. That's right, brother. Have you ever seen where someone... Had these, maybe they had some fancy jewels, and they took them to be appraised. And they said, Wait a minute, these ain't real. Somebody had got in, took the genuine, replaced it with a fake, and they never even knew it. That's exactly what the thief has done in many Christians' lives today. That's right. He has slipped in. He it. has stole the genuine. You got it. He has replaced it with a counterfeit. That's Amen. It. And they don't even know. Somebody went to sleep at the wheel. Amen. Right. Somebody went to sleep and allowed the thief to come in the house oh. and steal the genuine peace of God and replace it with a pill bottle and steal the genuine joy of God and replace it with the worldly counselors and the drugs that numb your mind. Amen. Someone has allowed the thief to come in the house and steal, and kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody. Yeah. And that somebody is us. us. That somebody is us. That's it, brother. Amen? Got it. He has commanded us. Brother Sleece, He has given us a charge to watch and pray, right. to be sober, to be vigilant, to not be stupid or ignorant concerning the devices of the devil. Right. But we've got a whole church world out there that don't even know the devil exists because they never hear anything about the only time they see him is on a can of meat or a greeting card. Come on, brother. Amen. True. Amen. Right. And then he's red and got a pointed tail and a pitchfork. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, he shows up. Uh -uh. The Bible says he can make himself to appear as an angel of light. Amen. Right. He'll show up in a lot of different packages. That's it. Amen. That's it. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it ain't the big, hairy, ugly, bigfoot looking thing. Yeah. It's the things that look pleasant, the things that look harmless, the things that you don't think there's any harm in. He'll slither his way. Right? That's what he's done. He slithered into our homes and he stole our Bible study and he replaced yeah. it with TV time. Amen. He's moved into our homes and he's stolen the joy of the Lord and he's replaced it with the things of the world that can only satisfy for a little while. Come on. Preach. You know the difference between the joy of the world and the joy of the Lord? The joy of the Lord does not depend upon what happened this week. Oh, wow. That's right. Amen. That's it. The joy of the Lord does not depend upon whether you're in the mountain or on the mountain or whether you're in the valley. That's it, That's brother. Right. The joy of the world does. Yes, sir. That's right. You're only happy when things are going good. Amen. But if you can tap it, if you can tap into the joy of the Lord. Amen. Oh. All hell be breaking loose around you, but you can still feel. Not saying that you won't feel some turmoil oh. or be going through things. We're all human, but there'll be joy there. Amen. Yeah. There'll still be joy in knowing that my Redeemer lives. Yeah. Amen. There'll still be joy in knowing that when He has tried me, I will come forth as gold. Amen. Yeah. There's still joy, and it's unspeakable, and it's full of glory. Right. There is still peace that passes our carnal understanding, but the thief has came in with left the door open. Right. Amen. We left the door open. We didn't recognize him when he came in and he said, made himself at home on our couch. Come on. And he's stolen little by little the lives of You know what, how many families he has destroyed simply because they didn't recognize him when he moved in? Yeah. We got to recognize him this morning. I ain't telling you to be afraid of the devil. I'm telling you to be aware of the devil and the devices that he uses. Amen. I'm telling you to be aware that you have an enemy. To be aware that his goal is to steal, kill, and to destroy everything that's good in your life. To be aware of the fact that you are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. To be aware today that you do not have to allow, yes, I said allow, him to steal your joy. It ain't his. He's got no place. He's got no part. Still in your joy today. He has no right moving into your home and taking over. That's right, bro. We need some men and women of God that have shake off enough of the world to realize what's going on in their homes and stand up and say, uh uh, it ain't happening. Amen. Get out in Jesus' name. Yes. The thief has moved in. Yes, oh, that's good preaching. That is. Amen. Pat me on the back, Brother Tyler. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You can
have been there to steal your Bible. The th oh, my goodness. I thought about that a while ago, Brother Sleeve. Uh -huh. He's moved into our churches. Right. And he's took the genuine yeah. and he's replaced it with some watered down, uh, some mess, amen, that man put together. He's, uh, re he's replaced it with a counterfeit. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. He's replaced it with a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody went to sleep. Amen. Come on. My goodness. Let's move on this morning. Amen. See if we can get all this in. Yeah. Listen to this. He's a thief. Yes, sir. He's a killer. Right. He is a destroyer. Amen. He wants to destroy you. Oh, come on. He wants to destroy your family. Come on. Say he it. wants to destroy your marriage. Yes. He wants to destroy your home. Yes, sir. He wants to destroy your witness. Right. He wants to destroy your effectiveness on the world. Amen. On, he wants to destroy. See, destruction is what he leaves in his path. Yes, Amen. Sir. That's the aftermath. You know, many times you see on the news, they show where a place has been hit by a bad storm, a tornado, or a tsunami, or something. And it shows the trash and the rubble that's left behind. That's exactly what the enemy leaves behind in your life. When you, when you do, I'm not telling you today that he's all powerful. I'm trying to tell you, you got more power than he's got. Amen. But you've given him too much leeway. You've given him too much foot room. You've given him too much space in your homes, in your churches, in your spiritual life. It's time to take authority and dominion over the adversary that should be under your feet and not laying on your couch. Amen. The adversary that should not be in your home. Come on, hurry. Tearing up Jack. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to what Peter said. 1 Peter 5 and 6. I think Peter knew a little bit about spiritual warfare. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. You see, many times we don't know what is hit until it's too late because we do not recognize right. the way that He works. That's it. And it's hard. I know it's hard. I don't blame a lot of you folks out there in the mega churches. Come on. I don't blame you, although when you stand before God, you will be without excuse. That's right. I blame it more on the preachers right. than I do to the congregation. Right. Because I don't know of a time, at least recently, that I have turned on Christian television to one of the churches with the big name pastor that I have heard a sermon on your adversary. Come on. You might have. I have it. Come on, say it. It's important today for you to know that you have an adversary. Amen. It's important for you to know today that it's not your mother in law. Right. It's not your father in law. Yeah. It's not your brother. Come it's on. not your sister. Amen. It's not even the preacher that you don't Amen. like. Amen? Right. Your adversary is the devil. Yeah. Your enemy is not your brother and sister. Your enemy is the devil. Amen? Yeah. He still exists. There's still a hell. Amen? Right. Now let me t get this straight. He is not the taskmaster of hell. Come on. He is not the king. He doesn't have a throne in hell. All right. It's not a place of joy where He can punish you and torment you. Mm -hmm. Study your Bible. We've heard all, the, you know, all our lives that the devil's, you know, he's tormenting people. No, no, no. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. And when they're sent there in Revelations, the latter part of Revelations, they will go there and they will suffer torment right. just like the other people that go there that reject Jesus. Right. It is not his personal playground. It is not a place he looks forward to going to. Mm -hmm. It is not a place where he's the ruler. Oh, no, 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 no. Amen. Amen. It's a place of punishment for him just like it is for anybody else that rejects Jesus mm -hmm. and the way that God has made. Mm -hmm. It's important to say that because most of the church don't know it. Mm -hmm. Most of them believe that the devil is in hell now tormenting people. Yeah. When in reality, if, you, if they can get you to believe that he's in hell, well, why worry about him here on earth? Yeah. He ain't in hell yet. Come on. He's going to the lake of fire. Right. Amen. But the Bible says he goes to and fro. Yes. Seeking whom he may devour. He's been cast down to the earth. Yeah. This is where he's at. This is where he makes trouble. This is where he is trying his best to destroy and to kill and to, and to, and to rob Amen. until he runs out of time. Amen. So it ain't no happy playground for him. Amen. He ain't somewhere down there dancing around in the flames begging you to come on with him. He wants you to go. That's just simply because he is sin and the personification of wickedness. Amen. Come on. Evil. Amen. And he wants to destroy you. Yeah. He knows he done missed it. Yeah. He don't want you having it. Come on. You hear what I said? Yes. Have you ever ran across people in life, and this is a poor example because he's a lot worse than this, but they got mad because you got blessed. Yeah. All right. And jealous. 
They got jealous. That's it. Mad and maybe even depressed. Mm -hmm. Because you got blessed. Mm -hmm. Maybe you got a new car. Maybe you got a different house. Maybe you got some new clothes. Yeah. That's where the devil is. It's a thousand times worse. That's it. He knows that you're blood bought. Right. On your way to heaven. Amen. He can't have what is yours. Amen. Unless you give it away. Amen. That's Amen. Truth. My goodness. That's good preaching. Amen. Praise what did Peter say? First Peter 5 and 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon Him for He careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He goes on to say, whom resist steadfast in the faith, That's it, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, Amen. this ain't just you that's going through something. Right. Amen. Peter thought it was significant enough to use as strong a words to say, be sober, um, be vigilant. You have an adversary. His name is the devil. devil. As a roaring lion, he's walking. All right. Amen. Seeking. Walking about seeking whom he may devour. He says to resist steadfast in the faith. Now remember that. because We're going to come back to that right before we close. Resist steadfast in the faith. All right. Jesus speaks of the way that a thief works when he talks about his own coming. Yeah. In Matthew 24 and 42, He uses this as an example mm -hmm. of the day of the Lord coming upon you un unaware. Yeah. Matthew 24 and 42, He says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. Ah, oh, did you hear that? Yeah. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. We've seen homes broken up because nobody was watching. Right. We've seen churches split, right. divided, destroyed, closed, That's windows it. and doors boarded up. Amen. Because wasn't nobody watching. That's it. Oh, I wish that would sink in this morning. Come on. You see, we're supposed to be watching. Yes, sir. For the snares. We're supposed to be able to recognize yeah. the snares of the enemy. We're supposed to be able to recognize the devices and the weapons that the enemy uses to come against us. That's right, and when we do recognize them, then when we resist them steadfast in the faith, then He's going to flee. We're going to get to that Scripture here in a minute. Listen to this. Oh, you see, He's a murderer. Jesus said in John 8 and 44 that He was a liar. That He was a murderer. He's the father of lies. Amen? That he's a murderer from the beginning. That's, That's what he's talking about. He's talking about your enemy. Come on. He's talking about your, your enemy, your adversary. Yeah. Your nemesis. Is that a good word to use, Brother Dom? Amen. Much of the church are ignorant in the way that he works. That's right, brother. They live in some kind of marshmallow candy land. Yeah. Amen. Say it. Sucking on their lollipops and eating their cotton candy. Right. Believing that all is well, there's no booger man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's a booger man. Yes, sir. Amen. There's a booger man today. Right. He has been around ever since. He's been around for a long time. I don't know exactly when God created him. Mm -hmm. But it's before this old world was set into place. That's at least it. in the way that we know it now. Right. Amen. He was back in eternity past when he said, I will ascend above the Most High. I will be like God. Yeah. And I heard Creflo Dollar this past week, or maybe it was last week, preaching the same old mess he preached 20 years ago. Yeah. That you're a little God, and I'm a little God. We're all little gods. And talking about how that he, he, he experienced resistance against the message 20 years ago, but now he ain't going to back down. Mm. Same old thing the devil's been preaching. That's right. The devil's been preaching. You ain't got nothing new, Creflo. Kenneth Copeland, you don't have nothing new. Right. Ken Hagen, I guess he's doing home somewhere. I don't know where he went. Hope he went home to be with the Lord. Amen. I don't know if he did or not. The man sure taught a lot of false doctrine. Amen. But that ain't nothing new. You didn't come up with nothing new. Right. Devil been using that since way back in eternity past. That's it. I will be like God. Come on. Amen. Come on. You are not a little God. 
I am not a little God. Amen. You cannot back that up with the Word. We are redeemed. Yeah. We are His children. We've been grafted into the vine. But you are not a little God. Come on. Really? You do not have the power to speak everything you want into existence. Right. Yeah. That's the truth. Prove it to me. Yeah. Come down here and begin to speak to this pew to turn it into something else. Let me see. Yeah. What kind of power you have. Come on. What kind of creative power you have. Come on. Amen. Bunch of mess. Yes, sir. It's a bunch of mess. And, but see, that's another device of the devil. Yeah. Doctrines of devils and the winds of deceit that are blowing. Right. But people don't notice it because they don't know the word for themselves. Right. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. See, ignorance gives him an advantage. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now listen, he's talking just before this about forgiveness. Uh -huh. Can I tell you today that one of the devices that the devil uses on you is unforgiveness? It'll steal your joy. Amen. It'll steal your peace. Right. It'll destroy you. It'll keep you from growing in God. That's right. There's people that have been holding grudges and bitterness against people for years. And the only person that's hurting is them. Amen. It's keeping them from growing. Oh. It's keeping them from releasing that and getting rid of that. See, we, we bind ourselves. Yeah. We're the ones that forge the chains many times mm -hmm. and wrap them around us. Yeah. And we hope that He uses bitterness. He uses unforgiveness. Come on. Hatred, malice, strife. My right. goodness. But we're not supposed to be ignorant concerning His devices. We're supposed to be able to recognize the right. enemy Amen. and the weapons that He uses. Amen. Amen. Because our adversary, the devil, is, a, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking Amen. whom He may wow. devour. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to this. It's time we realized what kind of weapons you use. Come on. It's time we watch and pray right. and resist Him steadfast in the faith. Come on. It's time we realize that Jesus, when He gave this command, when He gave this charge, He said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you that that promise is for you today. Amen? Just as much as it's for you. Then he went on to say, Rejoice not that demons are subject to you, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen? Rejoice that your name is written out. Rejoice that you're saved. Amen? Just take it for granted today. Just assume because of God's Word and believe in it. And those are not exact words I want to use. But walk in the confidence today that you have power over the enemy and that he can only do what you allow him to do and you will not allow him to do it if you recognize what he's doing. Come on, brother. If you recognize, it's, he said if the good man of the house that have known what hour the thief was coming, he'd been yeah. awake. If you know anything about war, if you know anything about strategy, you know that surprise is a big key to, to winning the victory. Right. They'll surprise you. They'll catch you when you're not looking. That's yeah. where the enemy works. Come on. That's the way the enemy works. Yeah, He'll catch you whenever you're not looking. He'll catch you whenever you're asleep. Right. He'll catch you whenever you've left the door open. Right. But we need to realize today that He has devices. He has weapons. None of them can prosper against you unless you let them. Yeah. Amen. Let's move on. I'm facing the Lord. If you read over there in Mark, the 16th chapter of the Great Commission, Jesus also would tell them to go into the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them. Believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Right. Amen. They shall take up serpents. Mm -hmm. If they drink any deadly things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, right. and they shall recover. Come on. Amen. Listen to this. First John 4 and 4. Write these down. I don't have time to go to them. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, Amen. Right. Isaiah 54 17 states that no weapon that is formed against you <laughs> shall prosper. Amen. Oh. That's right. My goodness. Every weapon that is formed against you, no weapon no. can prosper against no you. Way. If you recognize, you must listen to me. We must recognize the way he works. Right. We must be watchful. Come on. We must pray. We must realize mm -hmm. that he's is our adversary and that he does have tricks. Amen. Right. Number one, know the word. Yeah. When the devil comes talking his trash, don't get down on his level and discuss nothing with him. Just quote the word and go on. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. Amen. Just walk 
Just walk in faith in the Word of God and just keep on going. Yeah. You ain't got time for Him anyway, amen? amen? All He wants to do is waste your time. If you sit around arguing with Him, that's just more time He stole. That's it, brother. Even if you walk out of there thinking you got the victory, He got a little bit because He stole your time. Amen. He got you to slow down long enough to talk to Him. That's right. Amen? You don't even have to give Him that much time. Just keep on walking in the faith of the Word of God and the victory that Jesus has given us. Amen? Oh my, that gets me excited this morning. I can tell it's doing the same thing to y'all. Don't come down on His level. Yes. Don't have a powwow or a gab session with Him. Amen? Amen. He likes to talk. Yeah. Does He talk to you? Yeah. Amen. He likes to talk. That's it. Amen. And nothing gives him more satisfaction than if you'll start listening. Right. I'll catch you. Yeah. Have you ever been around somebody and you're talking to them, they wouldn't pay a bit of attention to you, you just get frustrated and shut up or go somewhere else? All yeah. the time. That's what he'll do. All the time. Yeah. Well, I'm talking, but they ain't listening. I'm going to go bug Brother Tyler. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to go see if I can get on somebody else. Brother Hinton used to say you can't keep a bird from landing in your hair, but you can keep him building a nest yes, there. Sir. Amen. All right. You can't keep the thought from coming, but you sure don't have to dwell on it. That's, it, hey, that's what we do though. We dwell on it, we chew it, and the more we chew it, the bigger it gets. Amen. Right. By the time we're done, it's blown plumb out of proportion. Yeah. Start with just a little seed of deceit. Come on. Just a little seed of deceit. Yeah. Know the word. I know I, I pound on that a lot, but I, I can't tell you a many, enough times, Brother David, well, how important that is. Come on. Know the word. Yes. Watch. Watch for snares, traps, and devices. Right. Recognize them. Amen? Come on. Pray. How about that? These are some old-fashioned things. Amen. In doing these things, we will be submitting ourselves unto the Lord. And James says in 4 and 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now I know we hear a lot of people quoting, Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. Don't leave out the very most important part of that verse. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Through knowing the Word. Listen, if you know the Word, if you watch and if you pray, yeah. and if you are diligent in the Spirit, you will be submitting yourself to God. Right. And when you do that, this here got me excited. You know what that word <clears throat> resist means? Uh, it means to stand in contrast to. Right. It means to stand against. It means to oppose. It means to resist. Do you remember what Peter said? He said to resist steadfast in the faith. Simply, if we could just learn to stand in the faith. In faith in what? Faith in God's Word. Faith in God's Son. Faith in the finished work of the cross. Faith in what God has said He would do. Faith in what God is doing in our lives. Faith in what God has already done in our lives. Then, you don't even have to speak anything. You just have to stand in it. Right. Amen. You can make a spiritual statement just by standing. Amen. Devil's trying to knock you down, but you just stand there. Because right. he's standing on his word. On. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Amen. Standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Just standing there. All right. Quenching all the fiery darts of the devil. Because right. he got this shield of faith. Faith in what? Faith in his word. Amen. When he says these things, they're going to destroy you. Say all things, all the things you said to destroy me. You meant them for evil. God means them for good. They're going to work together for all oh, my love. They're going to work together for my good. They're not going to prosper. Amen. You ever heard the kids say, you know, if you hit them with something that bounces off of them and sticks to you, that's what happens to the devil. You put up the shield of faith in God's Word, faith in His blood, faith in His Son, faith in the cross, and everything He throws you bounces off and hits him back in the head. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about victory. You can walk in today. I'm talking about victory. You can stand on today. You don't have to allow the thief to move into your house and steal what you got. It belongs to you. Tell him to get out. Amen. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Yes. Stand in the faith. Steadfast. You know what that means? Stiff. Solid. Right. You hear what I said? Yeah. My goodness means sure. It means strong. Yeah. Don't get blown around by every wind of doctrine, but stand in the right. faith. Uh, I know one preacher. He started out holiness, and he jumped over to to uh, some of William Branham's teaching. Now apparently he's done with Seven Day Advent. The winds of doctrine. 
False doctrine. The winds of deceit are blowing. Stand steadfast in the faith. And flee. Oh, this got me tickled. I'm a simple man. It doesn't take much to amuse me. The word flee there in the Hebrew, in the Greek, I'm sorry. It means to run away. It means to escape. Come on. It means to flee. Yeah. <laughs> what it says, submit yourself therefore unto God. Right. Resist the devil. the devil. In other words, stand strong in the faith. Right. Stand on the promises of God. Yeah. Stand with faith in God's word, God's son, the finished work of the cross. Yeah. And the devil will run away from you. That's right. That's what it said, ain't it? You clear up the house, all, all the devils be gone today if you went home and started standing on God's Word. All right. All those been pecking on your mind, telling you how low you are and how no good you are and how you ain't never going to be nothing and how everything gloom and despair and you ain't going to make it and you'd all die in time. Yeah. Stand on the promises Amen. of God. Stand on God's Word. That's Stand right. on His Word. Have faith in God's Word. Yeah. Resist. Stand in the faith. Strong and steadfast, not wavering. Right. Then the enemy will flee from you. That's true. He'll run. You know how sometimes you see, maybe you've seen it on an old TV show or something. Somebody break into somebody's house and they'll get by in there and they're messing around and all of a sudden the alarm will go off. They'll hear the alarm, brother Dave, they'll look around yeah. and they'll run out. Yeah. Devil comes in your house. Mm. He thinks he's gonna have his way. Yeah. I fooled him before. <laughs> you heard that old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Wish President Bush could have got that right when he was in office, amen. <laughs> I think what he said was, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, and then God bless him, he forgot the rest of him and said, You ain't gonna fool me again. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, he wasn't much on speeches, but I miss him. <laughs> I miss him, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil sneaks in. He's going to steal your stuff. He's done it before. Amen. You went to church Sunday morning and got you some seed. He's going to come Sunday night and try to steal it. That's right, brother. Did you hear that? Huh? Do you remember when Jesus said that the sower went forth to sow and he was sowing the word? And how the enemy came and stole some of it, and some of it got burned up, and some of it got destroyed, and all that. Amen. Some of it didn't take no root. Right. He's looking for that seed you got Sunday morning. Amen. You went down there to that old church by the post office again, didn't you? Yeah. Wish you'd have went out somewhere else. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for that seed you got. Right. I'm looking for that meat you got. Come on. And then he sees you. Come on. Mm -hmm. You ain't distracted this time. Yeah. Yeah. You recognize he's there. You recognize what he's came to do. Yeah. And you don't have to even speak a word. That's right. Just stand steadfast in the faith. Come on. And he runs. Amen. That's good. Amen. Yeah. He runs. He flees from you. Yes. See, if we get strong enough in the faith, when you come in the room, he'll go out. That's right. Come on. That's the truth. When you walk in the dominion and the victory that Jesus finished and accomplished and gave us by the work of the cross. Yeah. He'll flee from you. Right. Amen. We got too many people running from the devil. That's right. Yeah. He ought to be running from you. That's it, brother. Amen. You got it. He ought to be running from you. Stand yes. steadfast in the word. Amen. Unmovable, strong, stiff, steadfast. Yeah. The Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Paul would say to the church in Ephesus, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts 
of the devil. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Watch, pray, stand strong in the Word of God, and the enemy will flee. That's, That's right. how you get... You don't have to call the pest control to get rid of him. That's right. Just start standing in the faith of the Word of God. Stand steadfast. Oh, wow. Amen. Hallelujah. And He will flee. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody else has something.